and yeah, you can record whenever you're ready. <laughs> when Alexis was when Alexis was little, she wanted to be a veterinarian. She never had a head for science, didn't know the first thing about medicine, and didn't particularly care about making anyone better. She just loved animals and she needed something to say. It was just a question people asked, like they didn't know how else to talk to children. What do you want to be when you grow up? What subjects do you like in school? How many brothers and sisters do you have? A veterinarian, reading, one and her name is Mariah. What a big word for such a little girl. Reading, well, isn't that nice? Mariah is such a pretty name. Do the two of you get along? Of course they did. Of course they do. Those questions were so stupid. These days, she stares out at the winnowing grass and wonders what she wants to be now. Not an animal doctor, not a writer. Mariah's got her hands on the wheel. Her knuckles look bone white. What do you want to be when you grow up? Alexis asks her, feet on the dash. Don't be stupid. No, come on, if you could be anything. Mariah sighs. They're driving in the dark again. Alexis's sunglasses reduce everything to bare blobby shapes, a primordial stew. Mariah drums her fingers on the wheel once, impatient. She's always in a rush, even though there's no longer anywhere to go. It's not so much what I want to be as where I want to go. You're asking the wrong question. Okay, I'll bite. Where? Las Vegas. Alexis makes a face that nobody sees. It sounds tacky and shitty. Why Vegas? Mariah shrugs. We took a trip there once before you were born. We means mom and dad, although nobody says it. It's practically a third rule. Alexis sits forward a little in her seat, every muscle tight and ears on alert, trying not to make it obvious. She hasn't thought about them in a long time. She hadn't thought it was allowed. She is being obvious, but Mariah is either too focused on the road or her story, or she forgives Alexis for being a total space case, one or the other. It was nice, all the lights and people, the slot machines clanging and making noise, even though everything smelled like smoke. It was like a carnival. I liked it. Those are more words than Mariah's spoken in days, and Alexis nods solemnly. Vegas, she says, trying the word on her tongue. I'm gonna take you to Vegas. Mariah snorts, but there's just genuine interest in her eyes when she glances over at Alexis. Alexis sees it even with her glasses on. She always notices everything about Mariah. Yeah, kiddo, you're gonna take me out? Yeah, Alexis says, snugging more firmly into her seat, and that's that. They stop in a little Nebraska town for more than the hour it takes to fill up their bellies in the gas tank. The lack of motion makes Mariah nervous. She's twitching at every sound, but Alexis likes the change of pace. Tonight, she likes it. Her skin feels itchy and tight. They've spent too many days in the car. She spent too long with nobody but her sister for company. She's forgetting how to talk to other people. Even ordering food feels strange, like the words don't fit right in her mouth. They blunder out too coarse and too loud, and Alexis feels like everyone is staring at her. They pass the bustling bar with an illuminated sign that crackles when they walk by. Mariah asks, do you wanna? And Alexis shrugs. Mariah hates places like this. The phone that barely keeps a charge says it's Sunday night and Alexis wonders if she can find any honest to God Bible thumpers in here. They order drinks and sit at a table near the back. The light above them is burned out and it's a little cooler in this corner of the overwarm room. Mariah watches the door, and Alexis watches Mariah until she can't anymore. Sometimes it's too much, the feeling she gets from looking at her. Something like pain and fondness and an overwhelming hate all rolled into one. It's too heady, and tonight Alexis's thin-skinned body feels too small to hold it all in. She looks away before she does something she'll regret. She sips her beer, tepid and just barely carbonated, and rubs the lip of glass against her mouth. It tastes like copper, a bitter bite that reminds her of blood. Alexis's eyes wander. A slow-eyed girl with dark hair watches her from the bar. She lifts her glass in a toast when she sees Alexis looking back, 
and the corner of Alexis's lip quirks up in a smile. Mariah catches the tiny movement, alert as a snake, and glances behind her toward the bar. She quirks an eyebrow at Alexis. Do you mind? Alexis asks, already wetting her lips. Mariah shrugs. It's your vacation. The room is hazy with smoke and bad intentions, and Alexis isn't that kind of girl. She isn't the type that sits next to a pretty thing in a bar, letting her mind wander further and further away under the anesthetic of warm gin. She isn't the type to lean into a husky laugh, to press two fingers over a wrist to feel the quick beat of a radial pulse, to leave them there like an accident. She isn't, but she must be, otherwise why is she here? It's nice to flirt and it's nice to talk. It's nice to be the center of someone else's world for a few hours, even if the girl doesn't know her real name. Her name is Elsie and Alexis likes the way it sounds. She likes it so much that she whispers it under her breath when the girl makes her come, shoved up against a cramped bathroom stall. She tries it on in her head a few times when she's rinsing her mouth in the sink. Elsie and Alexis, Alexis and Elsie. It doesn't have quite the same ring as Mariah and Alexis and that's enough to bring down her mood, enough to turn down her mouth at the corners, enough that Elsie asks her what's wrong in that sweet whiskey roughened voice. Nothing, Alexis says, and she conjures up the smile. It's nothing. It really is nothing. Alexis will forget her name in a couple hundred more miles. Mariah isn't at the table by the time Alexis gets back, and she's sour by the time Alexis finds her in the car. She's mad, real mad, not the pretend mad that passes for it these days. Not the one that dresses up her worry so they can both pretend things aren't as bad as they are. She's the kind of mad that doesn't talk to Alexis across two state lines. The kind that Alexis wishes would just punch her in the mouth instead. But no, that's not Mariah's style. It never has been really. Alexis slumps down in her seat and kicks childishly at the dashboard. She does it again and again until Mariah picks up her sunglasses and tosses them out the open window. They go sailing into the night, colliding with the dark at 70 miles per hour. What the fuck, Alexis snarls, whipping around in her seat. I like those. So stop being a fucking brat and maybe you'll get to keep the things you like. Alexis slouches further into her seat, crossing her arms and hating the fact that it makes her look like a child. You're a brat, Alexis says. Child, 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 child. Mariah doesn't say anything. She just drives. You know, it wouldn't kill you to have some fun once in a while, Alexis says, and the look Mariah gives her makes her wish she hadn't said anything. She peels the flaking faux leather that lines the door, and she wishes she could take it back. There are still streetlights here. They light up the car in streaks of chalky color. Alexis looks at her own hands, bony and thin and clenched into fists. She hates these stupid fucking lights. She wishes she had her sunglasses so at least she could cry.